Hello and welcome to another trick. This is Butter Mix with Mix Training. And today we're gonna make groups by color. All right, so this is a technique I use a lot just to visualize better what I'm trying to do before I actually go and process more the geometry or whatever. So in this case, I have these like some flocking particles. They're just big, so you can see them better, but it's just points. You can see they are flocking. This could be birds, could be fish, something like that. But you might want to add some uh, variation in these uh, areas. May maybe uh, give a little tint to each of the birds with different colors. Copy a different geometry to each point, but also have a level of control. Maybe the director says, "I want 2% more of these guys. I want 2% more yellowish." Or something like that and this technique helps you do that really well so let's go here inside and you can see I have these the points so what I do for this is just create an attribute we had a bunch of attributes from the simulation you can see there's a bunch of attributes here in this example I'm using the ID so I'm just creating a colors attribute using the ID I like to create a colors attribute just to make it clear what I'm doing and then in a color sub I use that uh, Changing the ramp, the the color type to ramp from attribute, and then use these that attribute I created. The range is important, so I'm use I'm doing here an expression to get the uh, number of points on this input. So if the number of uh, points change upstream, this will just update. You can see the number of points are 835. If I click here, it's just getting that here. You can type the number, but this is a little bit more uh, procedural. So now I have control of the uh, colors by using the uh, the IDs. So if this is something that would work for you, you can use this. You can see I'm actually getting kind of the outside of this. So this is a nice thing that you could use. Now here in the next one, I'm using the point uh, the point numbers to create the attribute. But first, I'm just randomizing the points uh, a little bit more with the sorts up. So just making sure that the point numbers are totally random. Then I use that for the color uh, sub. And you can see now we have those colors there look pretty cool. We have randomness here and there. And this is the really cool thing that I like. I can just set some colors here. In this case, I want four groups. But if I want more of the, the white uh, particles I can just set a percentage here maybe the red are the more important they should be like 50% red and the rest the other colors you can see that is really well represented here and here as well since we can say all right so it's gonna be 50 I just put this oh that's not the one this 50% so 50% is gonna be red and the rest are just the other colors so you can see this is a very nice uh, way to visualize what's happening and you can also see here in the viewport what's happening and if the randomness is not what you like you can still go up here and, and change the C to give it a little bit different. So I have an example here of doing that. I'm doing the same thing here. You can see I'm doing that. Then I'm using a partition to separate the colors into groups. The entity to colors and change it to group by color here. It creates uh, groups. It's creating four groups. You can see the colors are there. And now I just take one color here into the copy, take that template and copy some spheres to that. You can see I have spheres there and I'm copying the, uh, change this to solid and I'm copying the uh, color as well to that. Here I'm copying terraces, boxes, and teapots, of course. And once you measure that, you have one different uh, object for each group, which is pretty cool. And if the director says, you know what, there's too much red on those, you can just go back and say, all right, not too much red. All right, how about that? Uh, yeah, that looks pretty cool, but now there's too much white. All right, so not too much white. How about that? Yeah, less white. All right, there we go. So now you can control this visually really well. I want to show you an example I did. So this scene, I have a lot of color uh, uh, points here. 
I just randomized the colors as well. And I'm using this graph. I was doing some, some chocolates here. So I wanted to uh, know how much of each color was in, in one package. So I Google around and I found this. It's supposed to be, this is the formula kind of what's in the in the pockets of M&Ms. So chocolate is 3%, brown is 20%. You can see I represented this with these colors here. Then I just copy this chocolate into each one of those. You can see there's the uh, chocolates copied and just simulated this. They just simulated this and did a bunch of chocolates and then just grabbed the color and tinted those uh, chocolates with the, the texture, just tinted the texture with that color and got my final result. So I added variation by using, using this method of adding colors by groups. All right, so after setting the materials and rendering, I created this final image with uh, using those kind of colors to tint the material for your shock leather. All right, guys, this is it for this Monday trick. Hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you have a lot of uses for this trick. I know I use it a lot, and I really like it, and I hope you do too. All right, guys, so thank you, and see you next Monday. If this has been useful for you, please subscribe and share it with your peers. Thank you.